here's a way you can collect emails and put them as file attachments associated with your contacts. Say you've got Gmail or Outlook, and it doesn't matter which, um, and you have a QuickBase Sync connection to that email, and you're pulling in all these emails. Well, it would be nice to be able to wrap them up and put them as file attachments like what, what is shown right here. Here I'm going to download a file attachment. You can see the whole content of the email is, um, is captured as a file attachment. So how do we make that happen? So let's go back into QuickBase and take a peek. First of all, you'd set up uh, an email sync, which goes out rhythmically, maybe every hour, to get your emails. And when they come in, what you have um, uh, is the individual field values that come from your email, from subject, date, body, and things like that, links to the original email and whatnot. So what we need to do is encode the information from above, because this is how QuickBase stores file attachments. We call it Base64 encoding. If I right-click on that and edit this, you'll see in the background there's uh, the date field is captured, the from and the to, and these are brought in by QuickBase Sync or a connected table. Um, so now that we've got the Base64 information, what we need to be able to do is these records come in, we need to be able to trigger a webhook that actually takes this information and pumps it into a file attachment. Now, just for, for fun, um, we used um, Base64 encode to encode it. And then I said, well, let me look what it looks like. So I decided to decode it after it was encoded. This isn't necessary, but it shows you what the email is going to look like in the file attachment that's going to be created. So let's see, I'm going to come up to, uh, let's go over to my email for a second. So I've got a bunch of um, emails that are inside here, uh, di different emails, and I want to bring this information in. Now, QuickBase will take this information automatically if you've got it set up to do it synchronized um, periodically like that. But what I'm going to do is uh, click on sync and manually refresh this. Now, while, we, while we're doing this, let's take a look at some of the other components of this, because this will take a minute or two. So um, every time QuickBase refreshes the page, uh, what we want to do is fire a webhook off. And let's take a look at the um, webhooks that are inside this here. So here, as a, an attachment here, what I want to do is take and say whenever the record is modified, uh, when, when it's imported, I'd like it to be able to edit the record we're on. And this is the table we are. This is the endpoint. I want to edit the record we are and go into field 25, which is the file attachment, and insert the content of that um, base64 encoded value. So this is what happens when I first did this. When I first did this, it only did the very first record because QuickBase looks at QuickBase Sync as a mass import, a bulk import. So it, it won't iterate through every single record that you have in your email, only the first one. So there's a previous step that we had to add this. So, and let's go back and talk about that. So what we did was when this gets refreshed, we want to have each record trigger a separate um, triggering event that does the webhook. And that's what this imported checkbox is used for. Let's go in and look at the automations. I come down here and I look at automations for this. And there's this table here that checks a checkbox for each record. So let's look at that automation. Whenever a record is added, this is coming in from QuickBase Sync um, in the sync table, we want to modify the record. And how do you recognize the record that you are, the record you're on? Because each one needs to be treated separately. Well, your record ID equals your record ID. So now we know that each record will be treated separately. And what we do is we take the um, value of imported, which is that formula checkbox, or that uh, checkbox, and we check it. Now, this is the triggering event that we are going to look at when we trigger the, um, the webhook. So let's go into sync once again. We'll go into here. 
we'll come down and take a look at that webhook and you'll see that the only time that this webhook, which is doing the, the end work here, is, is when the record is modified and the imported field is checked. That was the triggering event um, we had to inject in the middle in order for this to be treated record by record by record by record that comes in. And of course, we use the API edit record. Um, and of course, you, whatever you want your file name to be, you can insert right in here. So let's go back to um, the uh, informant, the sync here. Notice it's still refreshing. So I'm going to go over to um, contacts just for a second. Now, contacts have a key field over here of the person's email address. So any emails that come in through sync, the from address tells us this, then it will link up. Now down below here, you can see there's two different colors here. Um, and you can see this one is three and this is three. So if they're today, they're the dark blue. If they're within the last five days, they're, they're purple and you can use uh, the formula functions to be able to decide that. But these are summaries of how many records have matched the email address for Kirk Tracy at Gmail and the ones for Kirk Tracy at QuickBase. And I think that probably down below, we might even find another one for um, Notify. That's right. This is a QuickBase uh, um, email and it says, gee, you've got one here. Let's go take a look at that one. So this was uh, a report, a subscription report. And since it came in with Notify at QuickBase.com, it linked it up and now I can see all my subscriptions this way. And of course I can see and click on the email attachment at the top, which downloads the record, which allows us to um, open that record. And here's the email for that subscription report. Let's pull that over here, uh, there. So that's a way to automate the idea that you're pulling in emails and you want to save them as file attachments. The side benefit to all this information is that you've got a, um, uh, a record which has all the individual discrete labels, but if you don't want to keep these afterwards, you could actually um, generate a separate table and just strip them off afterwards and then delete these. Um, you can see how it's encoded and how it's decoded and all of that gets pumped into this email attachment.